Now, in Angola, there have been protests on the streets of the capital, Luanda. Minibus taxi drivers are angry at having to cut passenger capacity to half uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic and what they say is police harassment. Just yesterday, an office of the ruling party, President Hao Lorenko's MPLA, was set ablaze during the protests. Police said they have arrested 17 people in connection with the unrest. But uh, this is just the latest in a growing number of protests in Angola uh, at failing, uh, uh, falling living standards and a lack of jobs. Doctors called a national strike at the end of last year. And it's uh, just eight months until elections in this oil-rich country where Mr. Lorenko will be seeking a second term. Now, let's bring in Ed Milson Angelo. He's a researcher at the Institute of Development Studies in London. Thanks for taking time to talk to us on Focus on Africa. Help us understand, are these taxi drivers representative of the people in the country? Thanks for having me, Sophie. So basically what happened in Angola yesterday was indeed something that has caught many of us by surprise due to the way and the scale in which things have escalated from a passive uh, strike into a radical political, political protest and also an act of vandalism that needs to be condemned at all levels. The, the truth of the matter is that um, what happened is that um, last week the uh, Alliance of Tax Driver Association decided to call up a strike against a position from the government to impose restrictions on the loading capacity for blue and white taxis who represent the number one mean of, of transportation for many people in Angola, especially in urban areas like Luanda. And obviously, as uh, soon as they, they heard about the strikes, the government actually decided to move back from the position, saying that actually the, the taxi drivers can go back to 100%, 100% full capacity. But many taxi drivers uh, association decided to go on with the strike, stating that um, not only did the position of the government did not give them any guarantee because it was only a variable position, and they wanted something written to ensure that the day-to-day -day activities could be carried on normally. But they also carried, they also wanted to hear a position from the government in the issue of the quality of the roads and also the issue with uh, the job of our taxi driver as a whole. Mm. So, so this is definitely what has been happening in terms of the strikes that we saw yesterday that ended up with an opportunity for people within civil society who were not part of this association that also utilized this opportunity to pretty much protest and uh, showed the frustration against the government and the ruling party. All right. Uh, there's plenty that you've told us in, in, in just a, a few minutes, really, to be frank. But should we expect these developments um, to have an impact on these upcoming elections? Yes, definitely. I think one of the bigger issues here is that, um, obviously, we had uh, the position of the police stating that um, 17 people have been arrested. Today, we got updated number of 29 people that have been arrested. We are still waiting to get a little bit of more information on the identification of these people. But what we know so far is that these are young people. And this is interesting because this is starting to become the common denominator within all the last radical protests that happened in the country. And obviously, um, because we are just about, the collections are just around the corner, we definitely have to keep an eye on that because I strongly believe that what happened yesterday was perhaps a sign of what we can expect to happen in the next month on the warm-up to the elections. Uh, and because of the position of the current, uh, the current, um, the ruling party, and also the opposition party, we can definitely see that the space has been so politicized that we we'll definitely see many protests, radical or even passive protests, becoming uh, part of the, the coming elections. Mm, interesting times ahead there. Uh, Ed Milson, Angelo, thank you very much for uh, taking time to speak to us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Well, let's now take a quick look at other stories making headlines.